All right, welcome back. We're, we're hopping into a new unit, jumping into transoceanic connections. This is 1450 to 1750, as we're going to see Western European nations hopping into the ocean uh, to see what they can find. Uh, we're going to begin with the first two sections of the AP World uh, curriculum, uh, technological innovations and um, exploration and events, uh, the causes and events that we, we see. So first, starting with technology and innovation, here's what you need to know. Europeans, Western Europeans are gonna, gonna use knowledge that's coming out of the classical world, uh, the Islamic world, the Asian worlds, and they're going to build on that and, and, and enhance some of them with their own technological ideas and developments to give them the ability to hop out into the ocean. New tools, ship designs, knowledge of the environment and ocean currents and winds are going to make oceanic travel and trade possible for Western Europeans. So let's take a closer look at a couple of these, these things that you need to know. Um, with regard to technology, the magnetic compass, there it is. The magnetic compass this is a Chinese invention um, that, that Europeans are going to get their hands on, thanks in large part to, uh, to connections between East and West that have been facilitated by the Mongols in the previous unit. Um, the Latin sail, uh, the Latin sail is a triangular sail. This, this existed in the classical world in both the Eastern Mediterranean and, uh, and the, uh, the Persian Gulf and Arabian Sea. Um, and it was uh, continued to be used in the Indian Ocean trade network. The Latin sail is a triangular sail that allows a sailor to do what's called tacking uh, into the wind. So you can swing your sail back and forth uh, that could allow you to, uh, to actually sail albeit slowly into the wind rather than just having the wind at your back. And then right above me, the astrolabe. This was originally um, developed in the Greek world, but enhanced and made more useful by the Muslims um, in, the, uh, in the Arabic world. Um, and the astrolabe was a device, a measuring device that would tell a, a navigator how far north or south he was uh, from the equator based on star positioning. Uh, Europeans will develop some new ships uh, using some of these technologies uh, like Latin sails and another that I didn't mention, the stern post rudder. Um, coming out of Portugal and later Spain, the caravel up on the upper left, um, the Carrick, a, a, a larger ship uh, developed uh, later um, and used by the English, and then the flute, um, flute, flute, um, the, a Dutch ocean going ship. Um, all of these ships are going to be larger and more capable of long distance ocean travel than, um, than previous European ships that never bothered to go into these oceans. The knowledge that Europeans had to, have, had to understand. Um, first, an understanding of, of tides and um, an understanding of ocean currents, um, improved astronomical charts, knowing where the stars were so you could use them as navigation tools, and improved cartography. Cartography is the, the study of map making. And Europeans are going to start to, uh, from the Muslim world and East Asia, uh, get their hands on better maps and start making them themselves. Now, with regard to causes for exploration, why are the Europeans hopping into this ocean? Well, what you need to know is that we see the rise of state-supported transoceanic maritime exploration, and it's pushed by a number of factors. Um, economic factors, a desire to make some money, an expansion of state power and with rivalries existing between European states, and the desire to spread religion, particularly by uh, kingdoms of the Roman Catholic faith. So with regard to uh, the economics behind this, this, um, this driving of, of, of getting into the oceans, um, first and foremost, what Europeans are looking for is, is to try to get direct access to the trade of, of Asia, Indian Ocean trade, East Asian Chinese trade. So they don't have to deal with a lot of middlemen between uh, that Asian trade and Europeans. This is largely driven by what is known as a mercantilist economic system. System. The mercantilist economic system is a, is a belief that the wealth of the world is limited or, or finite because wealth comes from land and, and, and creating new wealth required land and resources for that nation to grow. Um, and so this 
became the need for colonies. The mercantilist economic, economic system calls for the development of colonial empires to trade with. And then once you have your colonial empire, you've got to protect your national economy. And countries would do this through the development of, of tariffs um, on other nations. A tariff is a tax on imported goods. And so in a mercantilist system, you would have a mother country colonies, and then the mother country would protect the economy of the state, of the kingdom, of the empire. And they would do this by ensuring that they had more exports than imports. Exports bring other countries' money into your state. Imports would send your money to others, enriching them. So you want to have more exports than imports in this mercantilist system. Religion is also a factor uh, of this expanding uh, uh, European world. Colonies would allow uh, new converts to Christianity. Um, and, and this was especially a focus for the Roman Catholic kingdoms of Spain and Portugal. Um, for Catholics, this is in particular important because of the impact of the Protestant Reformation. Roman Catholic Church lost so many people that they needed to find new members, new converts to bring into the faith. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church would organize a new priestly order called the Jesuit who as a major part of their, their, uh, their job was to gain um, new followers through their missionary activity. So you got to know a few major events. We don't need to know every explorer and where they went, but you do need to have a couple in your back pocket. And we're going to start with Portugal. Portugal is the country that really gets this ball rolling. And they get it rolling because they are sponsored by the state. Um, they've got a benefactor in Prince Henry the Navigator, uh, who's sponsoring these expeditions um, to find an all-water route to Asia. He creates a school for sailors to, to teach others how to enter the open seas and, and see what they can find. Uh, you need to know a couple individuals following this, this, this um, tutelage of Henry the Navigator. Bartolomeo Diaz, who in 1488 will sail to the southern tip of Africa and see that Africa ends and you can actually get around it. And then Vasco da Gama, who 10 years later will hop his way along the African coast and then across to India, becoming the first European to sail to India. Portugal will reach as far as Japan, send Catholic missionaries there and everywhere else in between. And they have a goal to monopolize Indian Ocean trade. They're never successful with it, but it's absolutely their goal. Spain following Portugal. Uh, Portugal goes to the south around Africa, so Spain's got to find a different route. Enter Christopher Columbus, who lands in the West Indies in 1492. Uh, Christopher Columbus traveling west to get to Asia. He just miscalculates how big the earth is, and he has no clue that there are these massive land masses of North and South America in between him and, your, and uh, Asia. Um, later conquests of, of the Aztec and the Incan Empire lead to the exploitation of, of American silver by Spain. Um, a later sailor, uh, Ferdinand Magellan, uh, and his crew will become the first to circumnavigate the globe uh, in 1522. Uh, this is done by going around the southern point of, of South America um, and pushing through the Pacific Ocean. So the Spanish do ultimately, it's never Columbus, but the Spanish do recognize you can get to Asia by going to the West. As Europeans have now made these connections to Asia by sea, the Silk Road is going to lose its prominence in global trade. A couple other events you need to know. Uh, France gets involved in the game. They are searching for what we call a Northwest Passage. Northwest Passage just refers to a different route to Asia by going Northwest rather than South or to the, the Southwest like Spain. Uh, of course, they're never gonna find this Northwest Passage. Canada is just a little too big and a little too cold. Um, and, but Jacques Cartier, for example, will explore the St. Lawrence River and claim uh, what we today call Canada for France. The French is, are, are going to start a, uh, a, a colonial system to bring in furs from the America, and they're, they're going to create a lot of wealth from fur trading in the Americas. Uh, the French are going to create fewer large-scale permanent settlements than the Spanish because their settlements are not based on plantation agriculture that requires permanent settlement. 
Uh, the English and the Dutch, they're also searching for a Northwest Passage. Uh, English explorer John Cabot will claim Newfoundland in Canada for England. Uh, later expeditions claim Jamestown in Virginia. Um, Henry Hudson will sail for the Dutch along the east coast of North America um, and establish a colony called New Amsterdam that we today call New York. So the big three, what do you want to take out of these two sections? Europeans are using technology uh, that has already existed around the world and adding to it some of their new improvements to expand their reach beyond the Western European continent. Economic factors are the major driver of European exploration, finding a quicker route to Asia, finding a direct route to Asia, and this developing mercantilist economic system. And we want to not lose sight of how state rivalries and competition between Spain and Portugal and France and Britain and the Dutch or England should I should say and the Dutch are contributing to this drive to explore and claim new territories. We'll see you in a couple of days.